Hey everyone, uh, this is me again, obviously. Um, doing a video again on Blinkstick, this time using uh, Python, at actually the request of a viewer. Uh, his name is Duncan. Um, so, just like having a little bit of fun, playing with different things, doing something a little different every now and then, and it's a request, and so thought I'd go ahead and do it. It's actually uh, not too bad. Um, first thing I wanted to talk about, though, was just uh, he wanted to do this in Python. And to me, Python is a language that doesn't make sense very often, um, especially if you're in a Windows shop um, or you use Windows primarily. Um, if you're Linux, Python, I think, makes a lot more sense. Um, it's sort of like using something like uh, GNU tools or something like that, where it makes a lot more sense in certain environments than it does in your average Windows environment. Um, but to get into it, um, so he kind of wanted a quick rundown on how to get started. Um, the first thing you need to do is install Python. For Blinkstick, uh, it recommends, I think it actually requires 2.7.9 and up. I've got 2.7.11 right now. Um, so the first thing you do is install Python. Um, once you've installed Python, you've got a couple of choices. You can either use the command prompt, the Python um, prompt, which looks something like... Uh, Python command line, um, and then there's a little GUI IDE ISE type thing um, that you can use as well. I actually like having something that I can actually edit, look at, go back to, save, and just keep going, especially when I'm first experimenting with something. Um, just because I can save it, see what I did, see what I did wrong, debug it a little bit most of the time, um, and then just expand on it until I've got a good enough grasp that I can use a command line. Um, so for me, um, as far as Python editors go, um, my favorite has been PyCharm. Um, I actually do already have it open here. Um, so PyCharm just gives you a pretty decent little IDE for when you're working on Python scripts. Um, the last thing you need to do is install the Blinkstick libraries for Python. Um, actually, if you just do a Google search for Blinkstick Python, one of the first ones you'll see is this RVDAS. could be completely the wrong pronunciation, but I'm going to call it RVDAS. So RVDAS, and then you've got Blink Blinkstick Python. Um, so what you do is you just go there and download the zip file. Once you have that, um, you need to install it. Um, so for me, I've got... Um, the Python library is actually just stored right here. Um, so there's the setup.py. Um, with Python to install it, it's actually pretty easy. All you've got to do is point to the pip.exe and then tell it to install the thing. Um, so the command for this one is actually uh, we should see pip install and then you just put in the path to where that setup.py is. Um, Python will figure out where that setup.py is. And then it will point it to what it needs to actually run. Now, I'm not going to reinstall it. It wouldn't take too long, more just a couple of seconds. But uh, being Python, I'm not entirely sure it won't break something, installing something over the top, especially if I've already fixed something for it. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, once we've done that, um, let's see, when I first installed it, there were a couple of things that it did not like. Um, one, in the actual blinkstick.py, um, It complained that there were too many spaces here, but that ended up not being a problem after all. Um, the other thing was uh, it said it required um, PyWinUSB. Um, 
However, I didn't actually have to explicitly import that to get it to run either. So it, that should be it. Um, but as you run through it, you might find that it doesn't behave exactly like it should or you want it to. Um, so that's the start of that. Um, see, what we do need to do for ours, though, is it, I went ahead and created a new project in mine. Um, mine is in... Blinks, I created a folder, um, and blinky.py is what I called it. Um, first thing I need to do, and you know what, why don't we just, since we are in theory doing this as somebody that does never really done something like this, we'll just start all over. Um, It does not appear to want me to do that, so I'm going to do a new project. I'm going to call this Blinky2. And in Blinky2, I'm going to add a new Python file, and I'm going to once again call this Blinky, because I just like that name Blinky. Um, here we're going to do import uh, blink stick from blink stick and this is going to give us what we need um, to work with the blink stick now I've got some red things here oh it's just telling me that I haven't actually used my import yet um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and declare an object b stick and I'm gonna do it is blink stick dot um, find all and if we go ahead and compile that we shouldn't get any issues at this point but it appears it is going to not be happy. Um, whoops. It's because I'm silly. Alright. From blink stick import blink stick. Okay, now we should see that we are okay. Yep, okay, there we go. No issues there. Um, next thing I want to do is I just want to see what blink stick I actually have plugged in right now. So I'm going to say for and that object is actually going to be B sticks because there could be many of them and we're finding all. So for and this is one of the things that drives me nuts about Python is that the for each loop is just called for. But we're essentially saying for each B stick in B sticks, uh, we're going to print B stick dot get serial. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run it again, and there you go. Here is my serial number. Um, so pretty simple so far. One of the other things that's actually kind of nice about uh, Python is that you can do you can explore the actual namespace essentially. Um, I don't care about pydevd um, but here's our blinkstick.py. This is the one we actually downloaded, pointed to, um, and installed. So it gives us a lot of good information about um, how to do different things with it, um, what to expect, some of the methods that are available to us. Um, it also tells us what parameters are in use for that specific one. So I'm going to go ahead and have that open here so that we can reference it from time to time. Um, but one of the first things I wanted to look at is that we do actually have um, 
a list of colors that we can use here. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab a couple. Um, one deep sky blue sounds like it could be fun. Let's see. Indigo. That can't be too bad. And we'll call that good enough. Two colors should get us through this. Um, one of the other things about Python, just being new to Python, is that with most languages you have... Um, pretty visibly discernible ways to tell what your scope is. With Python, it is white space. So your for each loop up here, or your for loop in Python, um, you can tell the beginning of the loop by the colon, and you can tell you're still in scope based on your spaces. Um, so that's how that works. Um, one thing I want to do here is I'm going to stay in the scope of each B stick um, and I'm going to go ahead and set a color for my B stick um, but I'm going to set it randomly okay and then if we go ahead and run it again we're gonna see it just kind of pick a color uh, it looks like it picked a pretty white color um, and that's it um, that's how we set a random color. To turn it back off, we actually have to make sure to turn it off. And this is nothing new. This is the same way in any of the implementations of Blink Stick. Um, so we go ahead and run that, and we see it turn off. So pretty easy. And in my camera, I'm sure you're going to see the cable for my little microphone dancing around. I move probably a little bit too much for what I'm doing. Um, but that's that. Okay, so next, um, I keep wanting to give myself more indentation, um, or more some visual space. Um, other choices we have here is we can set color. Um, I'm going to set, search the blink stick here. Okay, so we've got set color, um, and then our parameters. So... I believe that is meant to be the alpha channel, which we're not using. Um, red, green, blue. Um, you can also, or really it's more of a you can or. I don't know if there's a good English construct for that concept. Um, but you can or name equals none. Or you can hex equals none. So you can also set your color based on those. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set my color based on a nice friendly name. I'm going to go with Deep Sky Blue. Um, so we do name equals and we put in the color that we're going to use and then when we run it we see a nice, a nice Deep Sky Blue for our blink stick. Um, let me turn that thing off again. Damn, that should be the last time I have to turn off that blink stick that way. Um, so if we went back through the blink stick class, we'd see that there are some other nice um, functions or methods already in there for us. Um, one of them is we can let's go with pulse. Um, so there is a method for pulse um, where we can set the color, the name of the color, the hex of the color, um, how many times it repeats, and then also um, the math parameters, basically, that the author uses to animate the light. So the duration looks like it's probably on the seconds and the steps is... Um, probably incremented at 255. I haven't actually really looked all that closely. Um, nope, he's doing it directly on possibly the original class. Have to look into it. Um, 
but we know how to do that now. So let's go ahead and do uh, let's start with pulse. We'll pulse it um, where our name is indigo and our repeats I'm going to do three and just because I don't think that we need to really do this over and over pause run pause run I'm going to go ahead and also do the blink where name is we're going to go with the deep sky blue again and for repeats we'll do three again so these are going to be basically our big methods that are already pre-built. There's going to be all sorts of other ways that you can um, do this. Um, you're not going to be limited just to those methods. You could manually animate it or come with all sorts of fun other ways to do it. Um, but let's go ahead and run it. And there we go. So first we see our indigo pulse three times. And now we should see it blink our deep sky blue three times so that's it that's the essence of it all um, the only other thing that I have off the top of my head is if you're looking for quick short easy ways to do this in Windows maybe without using Python um, it is definitely a possibility um, I've actually got another thing I've been working on um, so this lets me do some fun things very very easily that one was actually called um, uh, it's been a little while since I actually fired this up oh that's just like that um, so that's gonna be another video if anybody um, is interested in doing scripting but maybe not in Python in Windows of course it would make sense in Linux to try it this way um, but that is also an option um, hope that that did help somebody get into Python maybe just a little bit um, and also blink stick with Python it really is nice how really short and sweet it is um, but that is all that there is to it thanks